Mike, I just finished my last checkup here. The doctor says both the baby and I are healthy. That's fantastic news. How are your blood pressure levels? They were a bit high last time. Much better now. The doctor says I've been managing stress well. It's great. You'll be staying at your parents for maternity leave soon, right? It'll be lonely without you for two months. I know it's a long time, but mom really wants to help with the newborn. I understand. Your mom's experience will be invaluable. I'll miss you. I'll miss you too, but are you sure you'll be okay taking care of Emily? Should we hire a cleaning service? Come on, who do you think I am? I'm a super husband who works from home and can handle both childcare and housework. Who else could better take care of our daughters while you're away? I know you can handle it, but it's a lot of responsibility alone. Trust me, Emily and I will have quality father and daughter time. Well, yes, but you know how you can be messy sometimes, like cleaning up after cooking, which isn't your strong suit. It's getting hot, and I'd like you to stay on top of the housework and dishes so you don't let anything rot. Oh, I'll leave those for you on purpose. For me? Look, I post about my housework and parenting on social media, right? If I did everything, it might make you look bad. Just writing that I cook when my wife does the dishes creates this perfect couple image. Mike, that's ridiculous. Our life isn't a show. But my followers love seeing how we share responsibilities. You don't need to post everything online. Social media is all about showing real life. Plus, if more husbands like me are visible online, it helps other moms too. They can tell their husbands, look how much other dads are doing. I'm strategic about what I post. Being strategic doesn't mean manufacturing situations. I'm just highlighting the good parts of our life together. But I've told you before, I, I don't want our private life all over social media. But social media and blogging are my income sources now. I need her to share some personal stuff. Can't you be more understanding about my work? There's a difference between sharing and oversharing. My followers feel connected to our family. It's what they want to see. I understand, but Emily's five now. She might not like finding herself online someday. Like when you posted about her failed attempt at baking cookies recently. Even though you used emojis to cover her face, you still showed her crying. I don't know how I feel about using videos of our upset daughter to entertain people online. Come on, it's not that big a deal. Being too sensitive. It's about respecting her privacy. She'll grow up one day to find those pictures of herself online. And we can't decide how she'll feel about that. Maybe you should wait until she's old enough to understand and can say that she's okay with her photos being posted. The post got so many supportive comments, though. Other parents related to it. I'm sure she'll understand once she grows up. We don't know that. I think being cautious is better. Don't worry. I'm better at social media than you. And I know where to draw the line. I definitely don't want any backlash, so I'm making sure that I read the room. Sometimes I wonder if you care more about your followers than our family's privacy. That's not fair. Of course I care about our family. I'm just building a brand that can support our family. It's work. And sometimes we have to sacrifice some things for work. Just promise me you'll be more mindful about what you post while I'm away. Of course! I only post a cute father-daughter moments, nothing embarrassing. That's not exactly what I mean. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. We'll be fine. Sarah, today's your due date. Any contractions yet? No, nothing unusual. I'm prepared for the hospital, though. How are things there? Have you seen my social media? I've been trying to avoid looking at my phone too much. Doctor's orders. But I posted such cute photos yesterday. I'm trying not to look. Why not? Everything's fine here. Emily's so excited about being a big sister. She keeps talking about when her brother will arrive. Really? What has she been saying? She's been drawing pictures of the baby. I posted them online. Got a ton of likes. Mike, we talked about this. But they're just drawings. Everyone thinks they're adorable. Yes, I remember before I left she was practicing changing diapers on her stuffed animals. Let me know as soon as labor starts. I can't do much, but I'm cheering for you. I will. Mom's ready to drive me to the hospital anytime. Make sure your mom takes lots of photos. The priority will be the delivery, Mike. Hey, we can post photos of the baby on social media after birth, right? What? It's fine, isn't it? All newborns look like monkeys anyway. And their faces change so much. I don't want to think about social media right now. But my followers have been following this journey with us. We've got to share pictures of the baby with them. Well, maybe. 
Great! Send me photos right after birth. That won't be possible right away. Why not? I'll be focused on the baby, Mike, not on photos. But it'll only take a second. There are post-birth procedures, and I'll probably be exhausted. Aw, maybe I'll ask your mom then. I want to post on social media as soon as possible. You know, lots of followers are supporting us. Can't that wait until things settle down? Don't be stingy. This is happy news. Oh, by the way, I took some money from our savings. What? How much? Not much. What did you buy? Just some online courses. Online courses? Well, my social media following is growing, so I thought about making YouTube videos. It's for studying that. How much did it cost, Mike? Just a bit over 10 grand. Just a bit? Th that's more than 10,000! It's an investment in our future! That's our emergency fund! How could you do that without talking to me about it? It's fine, isn't it? You're on maternity leave, but we're dual income. My earnings are stable now. Define stable. I got three sponsored posts last month. Mike, we're about to have our second child. I wish you'd consulted me before spending that much money. If I told you, you'd just lecture me about saving money. You always criticize what I do. Because you make decisions like this without telling me, you tend to be careless with money. Like when you quit your job to work from home without telling me first, we couldn't live without my income after that. We need more money for our future. That's exactly my point. We need to be more careful now, so don't spend our savings. Hey, life has ups and downs. Couples should support each other. Besides, since we can live on your income, I don't really need to work. I'm already doing most of the housework and childcare. I could just be a stay-at-home dad. Aren't I great for working anyway? Oh! What? Wait, I think contractions are starting. Really? This is perfect timing for a live update. I'll contact you later. Send photos. My followers will want to know everything. I need to focus right now. Okay, keep me updated in real time. I'll message when I can. Don't forget about the photos. Mike, where are you right now? What do you mean? I'm home. Are you sure about that? Of course I'm sure. Why are you asking? So you're at home. Has anything unusual happened? Come on, we just talked on the phone two days ago. Nothing changes in a few days. How are things there? Is the baby doing well? Emily's being good here. She keeps saying she wants to meet her brother soon. When was the last time you saw Emily? This morning, of course. She had cereal for breakfast. What kind of cereal? The usual kind? Why all these questions? They're both here with me. Emily is here. What are you talking about? That's not... Emily arrived here this morning. Huh? How come you didn't notice when you're supposedly at home? I heard there was no one in the house. That's impossible. Really? Then explain why Mrs. Taylor called me. Who? A mom friend contacted me last night. She found Emily wandering around and took her in. Wandering? Want to know what else Emily told us? I don't understand how this happened. Emily said she couldn't sleep because the room was too hot. But I'm sure I had the AC on. Well, she probably turned it off while playing. Anyway, Emily went outside alone and was found by someone, and my parents took the first flight this morning to pick her up and bring her here. So where were you, and what were you doing? I was just stepping out for a minute. Try again. It's weird. I was home the whole time. My dad went to the house, but no one was there. Maybe I was at the store? For how many hours? That's strange. How did this happen? Enough with the act. We're the ones who want to know how this happened. My dad is waiting at the house, so go home right now. Your dad is at the house? Yes, and he's not happy. Uh, I can explain. Mom brought Emily here, and Dad stayed behind to talk to you. If you've tried to hide any evidence, I will divorce you immediately, so tell my father everything. There's nothing to hide. Then why did Emily say you've been gone for two days? She must be confused. And why did the neighbors see you leaving with a suitcase? I had a work thing. Go home and talk to my father, now. Can we discuss this first? There's nothing to discuss. Go home. Sarah, please. Now. Sarah, you haven't been responding. Are you still angry? Look, I know I messed up this time, but it was just a moment of weakness. 
I don't have any issues with you, so... Mike, what do you mean by moment of weakness? Sarah! Finally, you replied. Thought you ignored me forever. I would if I could, but we need to discuss the children and settlement money. Can we talk about this? I can explain everything. There's nothing to explain. Dad showed me the hotel receipts. I was wrong. I'm sorry for going on a trip with a follower. I know it was thoughtless, but at first we were just talking about family issues. I didn't have any ulterior motives. It just happened. Just happened? Like you just happened to leave our daughter alone? She was safe at home. She was five and alone. I made sure she had food. Right. And that worked out so well. And now you're saying you just happened to have an affair? You think I'll accept that? No, I didn't think you would accept, but I told your dad everything truthfully. I try to be honest. When? Before or after he showed you the evidence? I was going to tell you everything. Honest? You deleted all the chat history with your affair partner. You only told the truth after my dad recovered it, and you couldn't make excuses anymore. You would have kept quiet if you hadn't been caught. I'm so glad dad is good with IT. I panicked. I wasn't thinking straight. Just like you weren't thinking straight when you left our daughter alone? I'm sorry, it won't happen again. Of course it won't, because you won't have the chance. What do you mean? Mike, you did something unforgivable. You left our five-year-old daughter alone at home to go on a trip with your affair partner. You even used our savings for the trip. You are absolutely the worst. You have hit rock bottom as a human being. Emily is mature for a five-year-old. I didn't think she'd do anything dangerous. I told her to stay home. Did you hear yourself just now? You told a five-year-old to stay home alone. He knows how to use their microwave. What ridiculous excuses. That's just self-serving logic. I'm sorry, but Emily is smart and... Smart enough to know her father abandoned her. I didn't abandon her. What would you call leaving a child alone for three days? It wasn't days, just overnight. No buts. I don't want to hear any more excuses. Let's get divorced. No, we will definitely get divorced. That can't be true. I've been posting on social media about Kevin's birth. Everyone thinks we're a happy couple. Is that all you care about? Your social media image? No, but my followers. What? You don't want a divorce because of social media? After you destroyed our family? I don't want a divorce. I really don't. I can't. My income is finally stable. Your income? You mean the money you spent on your affair? That was a mistake. I'll earn it back. Even now, you're only thinking about yourself. I'll be visiting next week with my lawyer. My decision won't change, so be prepared. Please, can we talk about this face to face? There's nothing left to talk about. Sarah, delete your social media post right now. This is the end. Delete what exactly? You know what? The post about me. About your affair? About abandoning Emily? It's causing a huge backlash. I just took appropriate measures. You posted about how your wife misunderstood you and might divorce you, making posts that implied I was the bad guy, playing the tragic hero, weren't you? I was trying to explain my side. Your side of abandoning our daughter? You're destroying my reputation. You destroyed it yourself. But you didn't have to post about my affair. You even posted our line messages. I don't think it's right to share personal information like that. Like you shared Emily's every moment without permission? That was different. I was building our brand. Sue me if you want, but if you do, I'll counter Sue. You posted plenty about us in the past, so I am ready to fight back. This isn't fair. My followers are unfollowing me. Now you know how it feels to have private matters exposed. Please, the social media is my income source. What am I supposed to do if that's gone? I'll be in trouble. Maybe get a real job? Being an influencer is a real job. You post as a dedicated father doing housework and childcare, but you only do things for those posts. You only cook for photos, making a mess in the kitchen during birthdays, anniversaries, and events, leaving it as it is. You cook a few times a year and think you're doing housework while I handle the other 350 days. And you still act like you're such a great dad. Don't make me laugh. You are not a real influencer either. That's not true. I help out a lot. I sometimes prepare breakfast, and I think I did more... 
Only when you wanted to post photogenic food on social media. It takes hours. You only make one portion, never clean up, don't even buy the ingredients, and dump all the difficult childcare tasks on me. You're only excited for kindergarten sports days and bazaars when people are watching. It's ridiculous that you act like such a great dad. I tried my best. Your best was staging photos while I did the real work. Sarah, have you felt this way all along? You should have told me and pointed these things out. I've been telling you for years. You never listened. I would have changed. I did point them out repeatedly, but you never listened and insisted you were doing your part. Only doing things for social media posts doesn't count as doing your share. And if you were really being a good stay-at-home dad, I wouldn't need to point these things out. The ultimate betrayal was having an affair while your wife was away for childbirth. You've completely destroyed everything. You deserve to be exposed for the terrible things you've done. Okay, I'll delete my post, so please delete yours. Why should I? Why? Because... Why? My follower who I had the affair with has a family too. And although only her first name is shown, her name is still there. Oh my, it's fine since it's not enough to identify her. You know where to draw the line, don't you? Yeah, but we don't need to destroy another family. Another family? Like you destroyed ours? That's different. You're asking for consideration after destroying our family? Sorry, but that's impossible. I just gave birth, then discovered your affair and what happened to Emily. I don't have the capacity to be considerate. I'm sorry. It was really my fault. I'll never do it again. I'll quit social media. I'll live only for you and the kids from now on. So please give me one more chance. There are no more chances for you. You can hate me, but I think this affects Emily and Kevin. I think it's better for kids to have both parents. You don't have to see me as a husband, but couldn't we work together as co-parents? After you abandoned one child and betrayed the other before birth? No. People make mistakes. I'd much rather raise them by myself. But what if something happens to you? I'll create a foundation so that won't be a problem. Having no father is better than having one like you. I am a certified accountant and make more money than you. I can support two children easily. Eliminating a partner who has affairs and neglects children is much better for the kids. But it must be hard alone. Having a delusional burden like you is harder. We'll be much happier away from you and your social media fake dad act. I don't want to be away. Please, Sarah, I'm begging you. I'll be a good father from now on. Don't abandon me. You betrayed us first. If it was just the affair, maybe, but I'll never forgive you for putting our daughter in danger. I tried to keep our family together until now, but I finally realized there's no point in protecting it anymore. Live however you want from now on. You won't have a family holding you back anymore. The next day, all of my husband's social media and blog accounts were deleted. He seemed to break down from the severe criticism and harassment he received. The psychological shock made him comply with the divorce proceedings without resistance. He was completely distant during our last meeting, so I received both child support and settlement money in a lump sum. As a result, his share of the property division was only a few thousand dollars. My parents also cut ties with him after the divorce, and now he lives in poverty, spending his days paying back the debts he accumulated from various payments. We made sure he paid what was owed to his affair partner as well. While raising two children alone will be challenging, I plan to take it one step at a time, rely on others when needed, and focus on my children's happiness as I raise them.